gaming journalism. <laughs> oh, Jim, stop it, you comedian. <laughs> All rise for the great leader. Today the Jimquisition comes with a content warning. A trigger warning, Jim? What for? Seriously, I mean, it's not that there's a human body on display here or anything. In this episode, I will be questioning the infallibility of Hideo Kojima. Oh, how dare you criticize Kojima-san? How dare you? Okay, all right. I guess that's triggering too many social justice worries there with my terrible accent. But seriously, the infallibility of a uh, Kojima? Really? No, that's not what this warning's all about, Jim. You're not funny. Seriously, it's about a human body, isn't it? Or rather, the representation of a human body <laughs> that uh, Kojima happened to help design, I'm sure. I mean, everybody knows my opinion on the Phantom Pain. I thought it was a disappointment. But, oh well. Let's see what this warning entails further. I will be questioning the portrayal of a woman in a video game. Oh, told you, told you. A woman portrayed in a video game. I will be, and I do not say this lightly, I will be going full SJW. Jim, Jim, you may be our glorious leader, but please do not, please do not pull a Zoe Quinn and try to reclaim the tag which is not of your creation and is meant to be an insult. It does not work. You are not an African-American, you are not a mixed race person, and you are certainly not, you know, that kind of white person that is vilified. Oh wait, yes you are, but you know, you're an ally, so it's, it's okay. So just stop. Stop please, great leader. Oh glorious leader, please. Stop. I e. providing some light-hearted critique of something in the industry and uh, 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 suggesting that a triple A game isn't perfect. Ah yes, light-hearted critique. Of course, that is a code for slut shaming, is it? Oh no, it, it's just light-hearted critique. Sorry, oh glorious leader, oh glorious leader, please, senpai, forgive me. I realise that some of you are sensitive to these issues, and that's why I present the warning now. Oh really? It's us that are sensitive. I'm sorry, but the trigger warning. Warning isn't really for us now, is it? It's for your jolly little mates over at Social Justice. I mean, you know, we're not triggered by this. We're just angered by what you're about to say. And really, you're just trying to mock us by saying, yeah, I'm going to totally shit on a well-loved and soon-to-be legendary character in a rather mediocre game, which is really a terrible swan song for Kojima. So sit back, relax, and enjoy a good old-fashioned verbal beating from your master. So please enjoy, obviously there'll be spoilers for Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain, and uh, 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 while you're writing the thousand word rebuttals to the criticism, I'll be too drunk to care by that point, so have it away! Oh Jim, it would be my absolute pleasure to hammer away at your echo chamber while I write my 1,000 word rebuttal. Oh wait, I'm not writing this. I'm doing this freeform, bitch. So let's cut to the fucking chase. Yeah, Jim, let's cut to the fucking chase. This quiet visual design is absolutely bloody shit in Metal Gear Solid 5. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like uh, your opinion. Yes, as the dude says, that is just your opinion, man. But of course, you're the great leader and we should take this as the fact that it is, you know, take it gospel. I mean, you know, her design is shit. I mean, it couldn't possibly be because she has, oh, her, la her breasts are too big. She's showing too much skin. Oh, she's barely, you know, wearing any clothes. And of course, the reasons are total bullshit, of course. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Jim, just because you're Jim Sterling does not mean that just because you find Quiet's character design to be shit doesn't mean that we all of a sudden should find it shit. Your opinion is one of many uh, bipedal fucked art opinions on Quiet. You are not the go-to opinion. And it certainly does not make Quiet's uh, uh, character design to be factually shit. In fact, I don't mind her 
character design. But of course, you're also going to say that the reasons are shit too, you know, because you think it's just an excuse. Well, let's just carry on and let's give him a chance, shall we? And the reasoning for it is even shitter. Is it really shitter? Or are you just trying to call bullshit on the law of a character? Come on, come on, Jim. Come on, tell us why it's shitter. Tell us why it's shitter. Tell us why we're in the shitter, oh great leader. When it was first revealed, the world at large was like, really? She's a sniper and she's going to be parading around in the nutty with her tits flopping out, yeah? And Hideo Kojima was all, Once you recognise the secret reason for her exposure, you will feel ashamed of your words and deeds. So now, those of us who've played the game know the secret reason, and I have to tell you, I ain't feeling too ashamed. Oh yeah, of course, you know, siding with unethical games journalists, siding with doxing scumbags like Zoe Quinn, uh, basically, you know, not giving a shit about the things that you constantly talk about in your videos in regards to yourself and your friends uh, and your track record on, in the Destructoid and the Escapist, which is probably the same thing, really. And, you know, the slut shaming you are about to embark upon on a, a person that doesn't actually exist. She's just a collection of polygons and a voice and a motion cap thing. Yeah, of course you're not ashamed. Why would you be ashamed, Jim Sterling? You're Jim motherfucking Sterling, oh great leader. Not for myself, anyway. Yeah, we kind of figured that, Jim. <laughs> we kind of figured that. Basically, she breathes through her skin. That's the secret twist. For reasons we can only describe as Metal Gear logic, Quiet breathes through her skin, and that's why she's naked all the time. Now, now, It'd be easy to uh, misconstrue and label this as just Metal Gear logic, and that is exactly what he does. When he says she breathes through her skin, yes, yes, she does do that. But that's because she's basically a flower. That's what she is. Uh, Quiet was given, and this is spoilers for those who haven't played the game, so if, you know, if you want to uh, skip this bit, go ahead, but this is a part of my argument, so be prepared. Uh, she got injured during the first part of the game and the bad guys gave her superpowers by the way of parasites and these parasites basically gave her the properties of a flower, a plant. So she breathes through her skin which means she doesn't have to breathe through her mouth which means that her skills as a sniper are greatly increased because she doesn't have the head bob and she can just take perfect shots because she's not breathing through her mouth. But in order to do that, she has to be, you know, not naked. I mean, she's wearing her leggings and her shoes and her bra and her uh, stuff that she puts her ammo in. So she just needs enough skin showing to breathe. That's all she needs. I think that's a perfectly fine reason. And it's really not Metal Gear logic. It's, it's science fiction. So if I were you, I would much rather take what the developer says... As, as, as truth, and not Jim Sterling, who has an agenda against such uh, representations of women in games. Which is funny, but, you know, I'll get into that in a minute. I might buy this excuse if we regular humans needed a thousand mouths and noses all over our bodies with which to breathe, but we don't. Or if she wasn't wearing torn tights, or if she was like Mystique from the X-Men movies who is proper naked but looks inhuman enough to where it's not basic titillation. And therein lies the problem. He's not telling you the whole truth. She is basically photosynthetic, if that's a word. She relies on photosynthesis in order to survive. She's like the sniper in uh, Metal Gear Solid 3, who... Is who has photosynthesis. He doesn't need to breathe or eat much at all. She's exactly the same as him. Yeah, apparently, you know, that's wrong. That's that's not a reason to you know go around without much clothes on. I mean, never mind the fact that you could totally customize her in such a way that she would uh, be fully clothed. But I think he touches on that later. And notice how he uses mystique and says this is okay. It's not basic titillation because she doesn't look like a human being. And this is another problem I have. It's only okay when people like Jim Sterling says it's okay. When we have this seal of approval, you see it over and over again, with uh, and the Sarkeesian's ideal female representation being nothing but a polygonal stick with no personality and who gets weakened throughout the game. Yes, I'm talking about the Scythian from that stupid game that nobody bought that she tried to, you know, shill. 
you know, it's only what they think is good. Despite the fact that, you know, Mystique is even more scantily She's not scantily clad, she's naked, okay? The character is naked, the actress isn't, but the character is. Yeah, apparently because she doesn't look human, that's okay. So, basically, if you got a great physique and big boobs, wrong. Also, you got to be human, so wrong. That's wrong. Yet, if you look vaguely human or not human at all, unless you're a sex robot, that's good. That's that's excellent. We, we social justice warriors really love that. Can you not see the cognitive dissonance and hypocrisy at work here? Because I certainly can. Or if she'd shaved a damn head. Oh, Jim, Jim, Jim. You do realise that women consider shaving their heads to be quite, I don't know, uh, taking away their femininity. But... You know, if the woman doesn't look feminine, if she doesn't look human, it's okay. Basically, you know, we can't have women. We've got, we've just got to have more men. You know, we can't have women who look like men. Then it's okay. But then they'll just complain that it's just, oh no, she looks like a man. She needs to look more like a woman. Make your bloody minds up. But no, it's bollocks. The reason is bollocks. And Kojima pretending she's not the way she is just to be gawked at is bollocks too. Now. I'm not gonna lie, Kojima did say part of the reason why she was the way she was made is precisely because, you know, she offers a sex appeal, a certain sex appeal. And this is where Jim Sterling shows his rather lack of knowledge when it comes to Japanese uh, ways of making characters, specifically male and female characters. Now, Solid Snake, or rather Big Boss, or Venom Snake, as he is uh, called in this a lot, uh, is the character that appeals to the women. He's rugged, he's got the facial hair, he's quiet but strong and affirmative, etc, etc. You know, that's something that, you know, to them, a Japanese woman might like. She might like this because he's a strong man, you know. But, you know, at the same time, he's got that quiet veneer that gives him a bit of sensitivity. Quiet is for the guys. Quiet is strong, sexy, and quite mysterious in a way that I think would appeal to a lot of male gamers. And that's the idea behind these two characters. But of course, Jim Sterling here doesn't know that, and he just sees, you know, sexism, sexism everywhere. And I can't believe that he would actually have the nerve to say that Kojima is lying to his audience, lying to us. When he didn't lie to us, he, t he told nothing but the truth about Quiet. I mean, he certainly did kind of let us down in terms of the plot and the gameplay, but, you know, let's be honest, right? He didn't lie about that. He knew, he said everything that he needed to say, he said, this is the reason why she is the way she is, and here's another reason why she is the way she is. And to be honest, how come, you know, the fact that she's scantily clad is such a bad thing? Of course she's made for guys. Solid Snake is made for women, but you don't seem to have a problem with that. You know, I mean, you could totally have Solid Snake in a similar way to... Uh, to Quiet. He can be naked. Which really, which brings him down to his dungarees, basically, you know? But, you no, know, that's okay, because he's a man, you know? You know, women, you know, it's fine when they're objectifying people, but when a man objectifies a woman, oh my god, oh my god, it's so different and wrong. What's wrong with making a character for guys? What is wrong with that? You haven't once explained to us why it's wrong and why it's bollocks, Jim. The game's camera gawks at her all the time, perving at her with every scene. And when you're on the helicopter with her, she's constantly flashing ass and showcasing her tits for you. Ain't none of that because she needs to breathe through her skin. Okay, okay, yet more lies from Jim. Yet more lies because he hasn't got a leg to stand on in terms of his argument. Quiet doesn't do this throughout the whole f game. Yes, you know, the game, you know, will look at her features in such a way. But you see that in films and books the way they describe characters, and let's be honest, right? It's not like Solid Snake doesn't get it too. It's not like Big Boss isn't looked at from a certain camera angle to show that he's tough, strong, and affirmative, and, you know, he's a real man. You know, you could easily make a case for that too, for the female gaze, but that doesn't exist. Anyway, so, come on. Uh, basically, she doesn't do that, unless you use her in missions a lot and build up her rating, her trust rating or like rating I think 
to absolute the absolute maximum level. And when this is achieved, she basically becomes uh, Big Boss's love interest. She becomes his love interest, and more cutscenes are unlocked, like the one that's coming later on, when she's in the rain and takes her clothes off to playfully play in it. And it's meant to be a scene that showcases their love in the, that very Japanese way that only they can do so. Goodfella makes a good case for it in one of his videos about Metal Gear Solid Five. And, yeah, that's what it is. She doesn't do all those uh, uh, poses and, you know, all sorts of things that he, Jim Sterling complains about unless you get her respect rating or light rating, whether it's called, I can't remember, up to maximum and you basically become boyfriend and girlfriend, really. She doesn't do that if it's, if it's as low as it is because I didn't use her an awful lot and I never saw that in my entire playthrough. Never saw it. Never once. The, the only times I see her moving around in the helicopter is when she's looking outside in the window of the helicopter or just looking at the pilot in a very curious way. She's just kind of, you know, just looking around, not really doing anything, sitting down in a natural way and not, you know, showing herself off to someone that she likes because she doesn't like me. She barely likes me. But never mind. Jim Sterling has an agenda to push, and the facts are simply getting in the way of that. And you know what? If Kojima had just owned up to it, I'd have been so much cooler with the situation. But Kojima was honest. Kojima was patently obvious, and he totally told us exactly what we were expecting. He told us what we were going to be in for. Apart from, you know, the fact she bleeds her skin because she's got the properties of a plant. Now, I have to have gone on to the Metal Gear wiki and I think I've got some quotes here that you guys will find quite interesting and completely destroys what Jim Sterling is trying to picture for you. Now here's what he says about uh, quiet and her lightness and her voice etc etc and this is the first part where he talks about quiet's role and you know about her and how they made her and he says in the game quiet is the main heroine whether she is friend or foe has yet to be revealed, so I had to be careful when casting her role. MGS normally has old timers and old guys. Stephanie is very skilled in action, but since she never held that type of gun, we asked her to do some training at home. Stephanie happens to be the uh, voice actress and the motion cap for the face of uh, Quiet. He also told 4Gamer, with Stephanie we had to make sure to focus her 3D motion on capturing her facial and body language and not her voice, since Quiet does not speak. She does make small sounds like uh and ah though. So there we go, she is the main heroine, so that means she has to be the most highly developed female character and she is. I mean the fact they managed to convey this through mostly body language is a feat in and of itself, but you know, let's continue. And this is concerning Mr. Sterling, our great leader's concerns you know, about her characteristics. And Kojima clarifies what he means by a more erotic character. Because he asked for the designer, Yoji Shinkawa, who really Jim Sterling should be provoking his ire at. Uh, really. But I digress. This is what he means by a more erotic character. And he speaks to a translator and he says... Maybe the phrase erotic wasn't really the correct word for what I was trying to say. What I'm really trying to do is create unique characters. One of those is, of course, Quiet. She's a really unique character. I wanted to add that sexiness to her. It wasn't really supposed to be erotic, but sexy. He also said, you're going to notice when you play, but there's a limit. There's limited dialogue with the Metal Gear Solid 5, and for that reason, we don't really want to show the characteristic from each character. Sexy could be for guys, weapons, vehicles. It's really that characteristic. Shinkawa also weighed in at the Q&A saying, From my perspective, it's not just the characters, but often I look at a weapon or a vehicle and think, that's really sexy. It's not just the characters, but the mechs and weapons as well. So, I'm going to quote a few more as well. And But really, you know, it's not meant to be erotic and tit titillating. It's meant to be sexy. She's meant to look good, yes. But she's also, it's also meant to make her look interesting to people. It's meant to add to the character. It's meant to be, you know, part of what she is. And I think that comes across well in the game, in my opinion. And, yeah, you know, just look at the Metal Gears that are in, in the game and the weapons and the vehicles and what Metal 
what Big Boss is driving in one scene and what he wears. You know, everybody saw him on his uh, on his massive motorcycle and his leather jacket. To a woman and to a gay man, that would be really sexy, wouldn't it? Especially when he's on the motorcycle, looking cool with his cigar. Of course, it's it's meant to be like that. It's 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 not an erotic thing, and I think this is probably a cultural difference here as well. Jim Sterling is looking at it from a Western British perspective, while Kojima and Shinkawa see as see it more from a Japanese perspective. And to be honest, it's a lot. It's a lot more of a liberal kind of perspective, in my opinion. So he's wrong there. Everything is can be construed as sexy in this game, but it's not sexist and it's not erotic because you know she's not an erotic character. She's not, you know, overly sexualized in any way. I feel, despite you know the camera angles, because they're just cherry picked examples. I've seen loads of men in in the uh, game get those kind of camera angles. It's bullshit. And this is what um, Stephanie Houston, who is the at, at voice actress for Quiet, says. And she says, Of course I was surprised to see Quiet's outfit at first. But, you know, it fits in the Metal Gear universe, I think. I don't think I'm allowed to say a lot about this, but, well, Mr. Kojima has his reasons for deciding why Quiet is wearing what she's wearing. Players will just have to look forward to that. And there we have it. Even the voice actress has no problem with it. And yet Jim Sterling thinks he knows more about the creators of this game. About how Quiet should be portrayed. And basically has flat out slandered them saying that they lied when they didn't lie. They said everything that needed to be said. They did not lie about the character. Everything we see in this game is what they talked about. So, he can fuck off right there. If he'd have just said the secret reason for her exposure is that I just wanted to get a gigantic fucking hard on with my big Kojima cock, I'd have had so much more respect for it. If only he didn't use a flimsy narrative reason he invented himself as a pretentious excuse to get her in the nude. In you see, it's funny. The only person here who's lying is not Kojima. It's you, Sterling. It's you. You're the one who is lying here, saying that... Kojima was lying about his intentions with the character, and he didn't. He said he wanted her to look sexy. He said he wanted to write a very interesting character and to design a very interesting looking character. Because she doesn't talk. She Most of her acting and responses to the player is through body language. She's a plant, basically. They don't breathe through lungs. They breathe through their skin, don't they? Oh my god. It's so ironic, you are the liar here, trying to slander Kojima and say that he only did it because he wanted a raging hard on and you would respect him so much more. No, you would not, Jim. No, you would not. You would then go on Twitter or go on your YouTube channel and say, how dare Kojima make this character just to be titillating and have a raging hard on for some big tits. He should be having a raging hard on for my big tits. Oh, wait. In that regard, I have a lot more respect for games like Owner Chambra that at least wear their perviness on their sleeve. They own it. They know people are there to pop boners over girls in bikinis while they fight zombies, and they don't hide away from it. I can respect that over all of these games that toss out sexy shit while trying to pretend there's some higher narratively noble reason for it. It's trying to have your cake and eat it too. No, it's not, Jim. No, it's fucking not. And this game has nothing to do with Metal Gear Solid. It has nothing to do with Kojima. He was flat out honest about his intentions with the game and the character anyway. So you can't not misconstrue it. But oh wait, you can. Because you know damn well that your pathetic audience will not research. They will not spend five seconds on Google trying to work out whether or not Kojima was telling the truth or not. Instead, they're just going to take your word for it. And the cycle of social justice bullshit will continue. And besides, I saw so many social justice warriors attacking this very game for its perviness that, you know, it's redundant. Your argument is redundant because your side will always complain about this bullshit. Because reasons. That's why. Because reasons. Looking for a cheeky wank while telling yourself it's more than just a cheeky wank. I mean, the game's dialogue directly compares her to the end from Metal Gear Solid 3, stating they both act photosynthetic. Now let's have a look at the end, shall we? 
He's covered almost entirely in a leaf snuggie. Where are his old wrinkly tits hanging about? Why can't I see his acorn-shaped asshole? Because it's selective bullshit is why. Oh, oh. Jim Sterling knows more about Kojima's character than Kojima knows about Kojima's character. He truly knows what it takes to make a brilliant female games character. Oh, marvellous, Jim Sterling, the oh, great leader. Sure, and let's be honest, right? I could show you. In fact, here it is. Look, here. Here is a costume of, uh, of Quiet in something similar to that. Not without all the leaves and shit, which are actually because of him. They grow out of his clothes through his skin, by the way. Only Quiet is a good guy and the end is a bad guy. That is the only difference. You can go ahead and cry about SJWs at this point if you like, I know some of you will, but it's not that I'm against boobs and arses and vaginas and cocks and all that. Oh really? Because that's exactly what you're complaining about, Jim. Love them! Genitals? Brilliant. Love looking at human genitalia. I love to watch genitals just pound in it. 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 Pounding it. <sighs> yeah, Jim. You totally love them. Nothing more could be said about how much you hate big tits and genitalia and all that shit, you know. Despite the fact you don't really see anything at all in that game that is remotely pornographic, which you seem to be suggesting. And, oh, yeah, really good at painting all male gamers as sex-deprived, sex-wanting, hysterical people. Yeah, brilliant. I mean, you know, isn't it funny? that these slut-shaming social justice warriors are always, always, especially when they're male, the ones with the big tits complaining about women with big tits. We see it all the time. We saw it with the IGDA guy, who was fat with big tits, and we see it with Jim Sterling, who was fat with big tits. So, why do you hate these people so much? And why should we not have these characters? Because I haven't once once heard a compelling argument from you, Jim. Not once. That hasn't been construed with lying and misconceptions. It's not nudity on its own that cheeses my onions, it's the dishonest, cowardly way it's being delivered, not just in MGS5, but a range of games clamouring for a mature status. You see, he keeps trying to peddle this dishonesty bullshit. He's trying to tell you that Kojima is lying to you. He's not lying to you about quiet. He said everything that he could possibly say about quiet and it all turned out to be true. But, you know, never mind. You see, this is just projection on his part. This is all projection. All the uh, attacks on Kojima's honesty and the accusations that he is a liar and that he's not being honest about Quiet's portrayal. This is all projection because I've just shown you. It's Jim who's the one who's lying, not Kojima. And this constant bullshit that I will get to in a minute about him knowing so much more than the 30-year experienced Hideo Kojima about video games, now we should portray women. <laughs> right, right. From the sex scenes in Bioware RPGs that amount to a little more than prizes for bribery minigames. Wow. Just wow. Absolute bullshit alert here, people. Jim Sterling, a social justice warrior, just flat out attacked a social justice warrior gaming company, Bioware, on its sex scenes. You know, yeah, those sex scenes that were so controversial that when you actually watch them, there's nothing in it. There's nothing there. And they're not prizes. They're not prizes. They're, it's nothing but storytelling. It's something that happens at the end result of building a relationship with a certain character. You know, like in real life, you you fall for someone, they fall for you, you have a couple of dates, you declare your love for one each other, and eventually you make love. Isn't that life? Isn't that what happens? Apparently this is a prize for the gamer, a prize for his masculinity to be, you know, I don't know, to be accepted, to be confirmed. Because there's nothing more confirming about a man's mas masculinity when he's given sex in a video game. 
<laughs> Jog on, Sterling. To the downright creepy, awkward, narratively inappropriate shit you get in every Quantic Dream fast, these titles want sex for sex's sake, but they're too afraid to just fucking admit it. Citation needed. Now say what you want about Quantic Dreams. You know, I don't like their games that much. I mean, Heavy Rain's plot was ridiculous. But come on, just because the sex scene graphically looks horrible, it's because it's a video game. Video games have never been able to get sex on screen properly in the way that films have and the way that novels have. Because let's be honest, right? Until Assassin's Creed Unity actually showed us a proper kiss for the first time, it was made fun of because graphically we couldn't do it. So we had to do it in different ways. So... I don't know what your problem is there. It's not titillating, it's not doing sex for sex's sake. Those two characters fell for each other. They fell for each other in the way that, you know, humans fall for each other. And even though it's a very Hollywood-like way, humans do have sex, humans do fall in love with each other, and they do sometimes have sex for sex's sake. So, what are you complaining about, Sterling? What are you complaining about? All I've heard is you asserting stuff on people and not backing it up with evidence. So again, I ask you, citation needed on this supposed dishonesty and adding sex scenes for sex's sake. In fact, games haven't actually dealt with sex until very recently, I might add. Because graphically, they couldn't do it. They couldn't do it. They had to, you know, think of more ingenious ways to do it beforehand. But now with improving technology, we can accurately show it more. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think uh, should reflect reality, but you guys, because you don't have any sense of reality, suddenly find that shocking, and it's not surprising at all to me that you think that. <laughs> okay, I'm skipping this because it's not funny, it's bullshit, and it just takes away from his argument. In fact, there isn't an argument, it's just bullshit. did especially sad they did this with Quiet though because she's a fucking awesome badass character when the game allows her to be. What are you talking about you absolute twat? What do you mean the game allows her to be when it allows her to be? What? The she's constantly a badass throughout the entire bloody game. Honestly I'm surprised you even played it because you're not talking like someone who played this game. It sounds like someone read a couple of shit from social justice warriors and he's now pandering to them and take it and just basically laying this out as fact she's a badass throughout the entire game if you choose to use her or not it's up to you if you want to use the character or not it's up to you not the game she's a badass in all her cutscenes i like the cutscene where some of the diamond dogs pissed her off one too many times and she proceeded to nearly cut his tongue out so Remind me, it's only when the game allows her to be, because apparently just, you know, having quite, you know, risque camera shots is not allowing a character to be badass. When really, these camera angles are meant to show that she is badass. But I digress. The best backup buddy character by far, and one of the most narratively interesting elements to a game that, by MGS standards, really did lack in the writing department. But the tragedy of her backstory is undermined by the skeevy camera shots. The sheer awesomeness of her abilities and battle capability is upstaged by her frankly ludicrous appearance. I'm sorry, but only someone as ludicrously insane and idiotic as you, Jim, would say such a thing. How the hell does someone being scantily clad... Uh, somehow take away from their badass characteristics. No, it doesn't. It's just the way the character looks. It's all about their actions, mate. It's all about the actions. It's not about how they look. That doesn't take away from anything whatsoever. How, so, what, what about, I don't know, let's, let's take, for example, Kratos from God of War. Does his scantily clad appearance and his overly muscular and sexualized appearance, which, let's be honest people, it is, okay? Does that take away from his badass at, at antics, killing actual Greek gods and crushing uh, demigods, etc.? Is, is that taking away from it? No, it isn't. You would be the first to tell to my face that no, it doesn't take away from him. So how come her character design takes away from things that she does in this video? How does the camera angles take away from this shit because they do it to men all the time does it take away from them no it doesn't stop lying stop bullshitting us sterling and the fact you can unlock later costumes for her that actually put her in some damn clothes only serve to highlight what an abject failure her default design is oh so 
how the hell do they exactly show how her character design isn't abject to failure? So, because she's in clothes that cover her body? Right. Citation needed, Jim, because this is just your opinion and assertions. It's a failure because you can put her in other clothes that are different to what she has. It, it, this is fucking ludicrous. It's a video game. It's a video game with customization. What do you expect, Jim? It's not meant to make a whole lot of sense. <laughs> it, it just shows how, you know, conservative and religiously Catholic and, hell, even Islamic you guys truly are. Because a character's only truly a success when they basically have to wear a burqa or don't look like a woman. They either look like a man or they look like a stick. Or barely human at all. Or they're not human. Again, this shows more the abject failure of your ideology and your argument than it does Quiet's character design, mate. Later in the game, you can unlock a number of actual threads, including an XOF uniform that makes her look like what she actually is. A hardened soldier, a killer sniper, and someone with whom not to fuck. Again, it's a science fiction slash fantasy video game. It's not meant to look realistic, you numbskull. Plus, her clothed outfits reveal just the right amount of skin to continue this photosynthesis narrative. Because any amount of skin would do, because we only breathe through three small holes in our faces anyway, and if the end gets a leaf snuggy, then the bikini isn't needed. You see, that would be true if he wasn't lying yet again. There is a scene in well, in MGS5 where basically Quiet is captured by the Soviets and she's in full prison garb and she tries to escape but one of the guards captures her and proceeds to harm her by basically dunking her head in a water tank or at least a barrel full of water and she drowns. Because, as we know, if we dunk a plant in a load of water, it's going to drown. They drown, just like we do. And he then tries to sexually assault her, and when he pulls her pants down, her legs are dry. And then she can breathe through her legs, and then she proceeds to kick the shit out of every single Soviet soldier in the compound. So, that's bullshit right there from Jim. She can totally breathe as long as what some part of her body is left exposed. He's lying. Instead, we get a cartoon version of wobbly boobed sexiness. Oh, and you have to unlock the silver and gold versions of Quiet first because we may as well literally turn her into a walking trophy. No, 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 no. Please, don't start quoting fucking Anita Sarkeesian on me. Uh, they're just aesthetic things that may add some gameplay value to it, you know, she may have increased things that she can do, you know, maybe as as a scout she can do more in gold, and let's be honest, right, I do know of one thing that what I did unlock from her is one costume, the blood one, basically strikes fear in the hearts of enemies, so there you have it. They are simply research things that are used to increase the character's performance. Nothing more. It's not meant to make her look like a trophy, it's meant to make her more powerful, you idiot. What Kojima promised would be the antithesis to the women characters in the past who are excessively exposed is instead the embodiment of women characters in the past who are excessively exposed. But that's not what Kojima is talking about. He's talking about the ones in fighting games who have no personality. This is a character who has a lot of personality, she has a backstory, she has a lot of characterization that not a lot of these characters have. That is what he's talking about. He's saying, this is what she looks like, but there is a twist to it. And that is, she has a story, she doesn't talk, but she is very expressive in a very, I don't know, I'd say a Buster Keaton slash Charlie Chaplin kind of way. She's very much a silent film character. She is meant to be the love interest of Big Boss, but you don't have to. You don't even have to have her as a character, even. You can kill her at the beginning. You can agree with Kasuhira and shoot her if you want to. If you want to, of course. But, you, you know, never mind that. She is the opposite in many ways, but you don't see all the other aspects of that character. You just see what she looks like. And then says, oh, she's just the same as every other big boobed character that's ever existed. No, Jim. No, Jim. That's not what Kojima's on about. And you cannot, cannot... Give me that quote and then try and spin it and take it out of context and tell me he was lying when he wasn't. He was telling the truth. Even worse than that, it's an intellectual Trojan horse pretending it's not just wank fodder when it is undoubtedly wank fodder. Again, that is opinion that you're trying to pass off as fact. 
Left, Jim. Citation needed. Metal Gear Solid is an inherently silly series. I get that, it's a big part of what I love about it, but it also knows, usually, when to take things seriously, which is another thing I love. I'm sorry, Jim, but you cannot misconstrue this game yet again and say it doesn't know when to take things seriously. This game is the most seriously dark Metal Gear Solid game I have ever played, apart from maybe Ground Zeroes, which actually had none of the silliness that you will find in an MGS game at all. It is totally dry and serious. Except maybe perhaps they played us like a damn fiddle, but you know, that's just... Maybe doesn't translate as well to English than it does into Japanese, but I digress. This game is the most serious game in the, the franchise. There's hardly anything remotely silly. It's your opinion that Quiet looks silly. That is your opinion. It is not a fact. I don't think she looks silly. I think she looks fine the way she is. And if you're so fucking annoyed about it, why don't you change it? Change how she looks. Change how she looks so she doesn't look silly in your opinion. Again, you're trying to pass off your opinion as fact because you're Jim Sterling. And this veneer of you thinking you know better than the people who made this game and the game series... It's just astounding. You don't know shit, Jim. That is why you're a games journalist. Oh, wait. Oh, no. X games journalist. This is the series that brought us the boss, one of the best fucking fictional women in games, who wasn't just a badass, but looked the damn part too. And the cutscene camera wasn't obsessing over the boss's physical assets, and she only showed skin in a scene that genuinely showcased her vulnerability and had a real narrative reason for it. But it did, Jim. It did. It's clear you haven't played Metal Gear Solid 3 in quite some time, and you just cherry-picked one scene from the game with the boss, and then just said, oh look, here, look, she's not having all this shit that Quiet's had on her. And you neglect to mention Eva. Eva was the one that had all of that as well. Remember? But, you know, who cares? Eva's a badass. But the boss, she's a badass and she looks it too. Quiet's a badass and looks it. Yet how's the two remotely different from each other? Just because one happens to have less clothing than the other. That's bullshit. And let's not forget that the boss... You claim that the boss's reason for showing her skin has far more of a narrative reason than Quiet. Really? Really? How is that any different? How is showing her cleavage any different to Quiet showing her cleavage? Hell, Eva has no narrative reason whatsoever. You, you, you neglect to mention Eva, of course. You know, I bet you'd just be like, Oh, Eva's so great, how dare you? She's different to Quiet, she's a strong female who don't need no man. Right, whatever, Jim. But it did, Jim. It did. It's clear you haven't played Metal Gear Solid 3 in quite some time, and you just cherry-picked one scene from the game with the boss, and then just said, Oh, look, here, look, she's not having all this shit that Quiet's had on her. And you neglect to mention Eva. Eva was the one that had all of that as well. Remember? But, you know, who cares? Eva's a badass. But the boss, she's a badass, and she looks it too. Quiet's a badass and looks it, yet how's the two remotely different from each other? Just because one happens to have less clothing than the other. That's bullshit. And let's not forget that the boss... You claim that the boss's reason for showing her skin has far more of a narrative reason than Quiet. Really? Really? How is that any different? How is showing her cleavage any different to Quiet showing her cleavage? Hell, Eva has no narrative reason whatsoever. You, you, you neglect to mention Eva, of course. You know, I bet you'd just be like, Oh, Eva's so great, how dare you? She's different to Quiet, she's a strong female who don't need no man. Right, whatever, Jim. But it did, Jim. It did. It's clear you haven't played Metal Gear Solid 3 in quite some time, and you just cherry-picked one scene from the game with the boss, and then just said, oh look, here, look, she's not having all this shit that Quiet's had on her. And you neglect to mention Eva. Eva was the one that had all of that as well. Remember? But, you know, who cares? Eva's a badass. But the boss, she's a badass and she looks it too. Quiet's a badass and looks it. Yet how's the two remotely different from each other? Just because one happens to have less clothing than the other. That's bullshit. And let's not forget that the boss... You claim that the boss's reason for showing her skin has far more of a narrative reason than Quiet. Really? Really? How is that any different? How is showing her cleavage any different to Quiet showing her cleavage? Hell, Eva has no narrative reason whatsoever. You, you neglect to mention Eva, of course. You know, 
I bet you'd just be like, oh, Eva's so great, how dare you? She's different to Quiet, she's a strong female who don't need no man. Right, whatever, Jim. But it did, Jim, it did. It's clear you haven't played Metal Gear Solid 3 in quite some time, and you just cherry-picked one scene from the game with the boss, and then just said, oh, look, here, look, she's not having all this shit that Quiet's had on her. And you neglect to mention Eva. Eva was the one that had all of that as well. Remember? But, you know, who cares? Eva's a badass. But the boss, she's a badass. And she looks it, too. Quiet's a badass and looks it. Yet, how's the two remotely different from each other? Just because one happens to have less clothing than the other. That's bullshit. And let's not forget that the boss... You claim that the boss's reason for showing her skin has far more of a narrative reason than Quiet. Really? Really? How is that any different? How is showing her cleavage any different to Quiet showing her cleavage? Hell, Eva has no narrative reason whatsoever. You, you neglect to mention Eva, of course. You know, I bet you'd just be like, Oh, Eva's so great, how dare you? She's different to Quiet, she's a strong female who don't need no man. Right, whatever, Jim. But it did, Jim. It did. It's clear you haven't played Metal Gear Solid 3 in quite some time, and you just cherry-picked one scene from the game with the boss, and then just said, oh, look, here, look, she's not having all this shit that Quiet's had on her. And you neglect... With Quiet, the priority is clear, and that priority is not to make her an interesting character. If it was, then she'd have been treated like the boss. But she was treated like the boss, you idiot. She totally was. She has the exact same treatment as the boss, as the main heroine of this story. This is just your opinion. This is your assertion. This is lies upon lies. You keep treading... You keep showing us all this game footage of the camera in such a way that you're trying to basically say, oh, look... It's, she's just a sex object. Anyone can make anything look the way they want through cherry picking. It's a fallacy, Jim, and you know damn well what you're doing. There is literally no difference in the way the boss is portrayed, in the way that Quiet is portrayed, other than one doesn't have dialogue very much, while the other does. If anything, one's more a marvel of voice acting, and the other is more a marvel of physical acting in a video game. In a video game where there is hardly any physical acting at all, apart from motion capture. But of course, you know, never mind this, never mind this, it's totally different because of our double standards, you know? It's okay when we say it's good. Besides which, if you explain away everything with it's a Metal Gear game, it's always silly and you're stupid if you criticise it, then you ultimately do Hideo Kojima himself a disservice. But you just did that earlier on when you said the best way I can describe it is Metal Gear logic. Jesus Christ, contradictions and hypocrisy, ladies and gentlemen. Jim Sterling's bread and butter. As a writer, I like to think I have a bit more respect for him than to simply shrug at everything he does and say, that's just what he does. I say that about Michael Bay, because I don't respect Michael Bay. Yeah, MGS can be stupidly, gloriously dumb, but it's capable of being provocative and thoughtful too, something the stupidity often enhances through its contrast of mood. With quiet, MGS5 misfired. Wait, so despite the fact that Michael Bay can be stupid too, in fact all his movies are pretty much stupid apart from the island, you let Kojima slide because you respect him. This is what it is. This is what it is. It's all about the respect. It's all about, you know, what they find to be good. If they find it good, it's okay. If they're doing things like Quiet, if they make characters like Quiet, no, social justice warriors, when they do it, it's, it's a-okay, it's fine. But when it's people like Kojima or when it's people like... Michael Bay. When it's Michael Bay, everything he does is problematic. But Kojima, when he gets it wrong, is problematic. But usually he gets it right. You know, most of the time he's, you know, he's back. He's doing their standards well. This is all it is. This is this is pretty much all it is. It's contradictory standards that Jim Sterling seems to be unaware of, or maybe he is aware and just not being bothered to be honest with us, which is funny because that's exactly what he just accused Kojima of doing. And it would be disrespectful to the game to pretend it's incapable of misfiring. Fact is, Kojima can do better. Kojima has done better, and to not demand better is to devalue his work overall. There are far more problems with the Metal Gear Solid 5 than Quiet. Quiet is actually one of the shining examples in a rather mediocre game, Jim Sterling. I mean, you know, out of all the things you criticise, you criticise her above all, despite the fact that promises that weren't kept, such as the plot, th the gameplay, the fact that it's unfinished and rushed, 
But, oh no, you know, you don't talk about that. You don't talk about that at all. You talk about quiet. You know, when other gamers are crying out with someone to tell Konami exactly where they got wrong, you parrot the social justice agenda. So much for being for the consumer. So much for being for the plebs, Jim Sterling. So much for that. You could argue that looks don't make the character, but imagine if Escape from New York had Kurt Russell wearing a clown nose the whole time, or if everyone in Memoirs of a Geisha had gigantic massive hands. Visual design is an important part of any character, and getting it wrong can be a real fuck up. There's a reason we get best costume awards for other visual media. Hell, with enough nerds that get pissy over a person of colour being in the Fantastic Four, I don't want to hear it from nerds saying a character's appearance isn't important. As you see, this is where he starts nerd shaming now, because apparently we're all racists for wanting a character to be portrayed canonically and not for, you know, spurious reasons, such as PC. But never mind, never mind, you know. Uh, the nerds are always wrong, but the nerds are always right as well when we say so, says Jim Sterling. You see, it's funny, because that's yet more projection on his part, because... I don't want to be lectured on character design from a person who's never character designed in his life, who thinks he knows more than Kojima, who thinks he knows more than every other character designer in the video game industry. He thinks he knows how quiet should be portrayed, when really all it is is conjecture in his opinion. You know, it's funny that, isn't it? But... Pff. What do I know? I'm just a guy who's never made a video game in his life. As a video game, I adore Metal Gear Solid 5. I really do, as you'll know if you read my near glowing review. But narratively, it's a letdown, despite its interactive brilliance. And Quiet is a perfect example of how self-defeating the game's story is. Quiet is only an example of that because you don't like the way she was designed, Jim. And the way that the camera looks at her. That is not a reason to say that she is an example of failure in this game. Those other reasons are examples of true failure. Quiet is not. Those are bullshit conjectural reasons. They are not facts. They are not where the game went wrong at all. Kojima had on his hands a potential new icon in MGS series history, a new boss. But he let his testes rule the design and he gave us an object to drool over first and a complicated individual second. Citation needed and that is just your opinion. Jim, that is just your opinion, and I don't mean to appeal to the masses, but I think you'll find most people disagree with you. The gamers and the Metal Gear Solid fans, pe hey, people who have, for the first time, have played a Metal Gear Solid game, which happens to be Metal NGS 5, and so it's considered quite to be one of the greatest characters ever. She will go down in history as one of the best characters in the series, bar none. Despite your opinion, hell, despite my opinion, We'll let the history books decide that, and at the moment, it seems to me that she's a very popular character, not only for cosplayers, etc., and for men, but in overall fans, people who are not interested in, her, in the way she looks. And I personally think that she's a complicated character first, and drooling eye candy later, because throughout the game, there is nothing but, you know, characterization of her, character development. You know, we, we see her in her moments of weakness and her moments of strength and I don't ever once see her as a sex object. I see her as a character who's deeply flawed and has a horrible past and has fallen for the boss. I mean, never mind that, you know. For you, you have to dumb, it, dumb her down, you have to basically bring her down to her appearance in order to trash her. You know, because to, to you, everything else is fine but the the, the way she looks is wrong, and that's a failure, apparently. But that's just your aesthetic opinion, Jim, and nothing more. Worse than that, he pretended otherwise. The only difference between this and Senran Kagura is at least Senran Kagura has the spine to admit what it is. But I know some people swallow it hook, line, and sinker that because there's a narrative reason for it, that's good enough. Even if it's a limp reason that's been invented from whole cloth. So maybe on the next Jimquisition, I'll start campaigning hardcore for vile monster Donald Trump's presidency, and it'll be be okay. You know why? Because I breathe through my skin. So vote for Donald Trump. Because I breathe through my skin. There is so much wrong with what you just said there. I have to let it all sink in for a second. Oh, great leader, great leader, great leader, great leader. Ah, yes. So, because of a legitimate narrative reason which you think is illegitimate just because of the way she looks we are now right-wing 
Donald Trump supporters for liking the way that Quiet looks and not minding the narrative reason behind the way she looks. <laughs> well done, Jim Sterling. Quality argumentation there. Brilliant debate. That's such an ad hominem. Brilliant ad hominem. It actually helps your argument. Really fantastic. You couldn't be f <laughs> could be so wrong. You couldn't be so wrong if you tried, Jim. And again, the accusations of lying and the accusation of dishonesty. Kojima told us what she was going to be. They showed us what she was going to be. And she was entirely that in the game. I honestly cannot believe you even played this game. Because you don't talk like someone who played it. You talk about someone who's just heard about it offhand. And made a review about it. Honestly, you're a dishonest asshole, Jim. That's what you are. You are being dishonest. You have completely mischaracterized not only Quiet and Kojima. But the game itself. The game is nothing like this at all. But, you know, you have an agenda to push. But it's okay, if we disagree with you, we're just Donald Trump supporters, so <laughs> what do I know? So yesterday, I was urinating into the exhaust pipe of my neighbour's car, and they caught me doing it, and they said, Jim, why the fuck are you urinating in the exhaust of my car? And I said, can you not see? I'm clearly breathing through my skin right now. And the neighbour apologised, felt ashamed of their words and deeds, and said, carry on. Slide your little chungus up the exhaust of my car and piss away, my friend. Piss away, because you breathe through your skin. <laughs> oh, brilliant, says the social justice warrior who constantly pulls these arguments out of his ass. Life's good when you're a ninja block. Yes, we need to piss inside your car. Yes, we need to climb on the roof of your house at night while you're asleep and stamp on it, yelling, I breathe through my skin, I breathe through my skin, vote for Donald Trump, I breathe through my skin. Please, have a little understanding for those of us who breathe through our skin, and thank God for me, because I breathe through my skin. <sighs> you see what I mean, guys? See what I mean? Projection. There's nothing more to say about that. Some of you may have been expecting today's episode to be about Mad Max and the review score controversy that happened uh, because Polygon didn't like it and I didn't like it uh, because I think it's crap. And then Penny Arcade said that objectively the game isn't a 5 out of 10 and uh, some other people got upset because some other people on the internet didn't like the AAA video game that some other people liked. And I've covered review score controversies so often over the years that I think all I've got left to say about it is if you're angry over a review score just grow up and fuck off there's there's nothing left to say about it anymore just grow up and fuck off yeah you know i could have stood up for the consumer like i always say i do that i always pedal that i do and all my apologists always say that i do but no i'm not going to stand up for my audience because you know i've done it so many times so many times i've just grown even more lazy and fat throughout the years that now i just want to you know swim in my patreon money like scrooge mcduck and just fuck off all of you gamers who you know need proper critical responses to these games because you're just a load of childlike adults i need to grow up and fuck off mad max was crap this skit was crap in fact all your skits were crap in fact your video was crap and your arguments were crap and you look like crap oh but don't don't mind me because you know i breathe through my skin that's why i can say these things <laughs> you know what i'm fucking done with jim Fucking done. I'm going to wait till the next time he comes up with something bullshit like this. Alright, this has been Charmy Man 93 Like and share the video, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you all later.